station. This is Houston. Gentlemen, you're looking good. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. Mike, Internet Media, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station 4 voice check. Station, this is Jake Horowitz, the co-founder of Mike. How do you hear me? Jake, we hear you loud and clear. How about us? We hear you loud and clear, and we wanted to start by wishing you a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year from down here on Earth. And back at you. We wish you all the same. And thank you for speaking with Mike today. Uh, I think we'll start by just jumping right in. Uh, we wanted to start by asking you, how do you all cooperate across nationality lines? And can you share maybe an example or a story of how that international cooperation plays out in action? Well, the nice thing is, uh, even though we come from lots of different backgrounds, even if in the United States, but across countries, we're all human beings and we all uh, love our families. We are great team players and it's just not an issue at all. In fact, I'd say the diversity of our crew is a big uh, contribu contribution to the strength of our crew. And I would... And, and Jake, I do have uh, one example and actually it happened yesterday. So of course yesterday was Christmas and we all had to, uh, to work yesterday and our Russian uh, crewmates had some free time and they actually set up a dinner. They decorated the Russian segment and they invited all of us over for like a Christmas dinner. So that was pretty cool that it is a more of a U.S. holiday, you know, for us here. But our Russian crewmates helped us celebrate it. And it was a it was a great evening. And if I understand correctly, do you all speak Russian as well as English? And Japanese? <laughs> Only one of our crewmates speaks all three, but uh, yes. most of us make a strong attempt at the second. I'm speaking a mix of uh, Russian and uh, English and uh, Japanese. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, I can say that in 2017, at least here on Earth, it certainly felt like international tensions rose to what felt like an all-time high and my question for you guys is, what do you think that the world and world governments can learn from this amount of cooperation that you're talking about and implement back here on Earth? So as we come into the holiday season and we move into 2018, uh, we're marking the 20th year of operations of the International Space Station with a multinational crew. And uh, there's been a lot of challenges. There have been a lot of uh, design uh, updates. There's been a lot of operations. There's been a lot of integration. And over the 20 years, uh, we've been operating this engineering marvel 250 miles above uh, the Earth, 365 days a year, with basically no problems. I think that's a great testament to what we can do when we work together. And, and what advice would you give specifically to world leaders and to governments about how they take that same spirit and they implement that here back on Earth in 2018? I'd say keep trying and keep talking. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. So I want to ask you as well uh, a question about what do you guys think it's going to take for us to get as a world to Mars? And I'd imagine that's going to take quite a bit of this international cooperation that we're asking about. But maybe you could talk a little bit about what you think it will take and also how significant of a milestone and a achievement that really will be. So getting to Mars is, uh, is the goal. That's, uh, that's where humans want to go. It's part of our evolution. It's part of uh, where we want to go. Uh, but to get there is going to take a lot of time, a lot of effort, and, a, and uh, quite a few years probably. I don't think we're going to be able to do it alone. We're going to have to work as a human race together internationally uh, to make it happen. And one of the biggest milestones, I believe, is to go back to the moon so that we can have a place to operate from a place to test all of our new systems, design concepts, and operation, operational concepts, and then stage 
uh, a mission uh, to uh, Mars from there. So absolutely critical uh, to our program. And, and what will that represent when, when, when we get to Mars? Why is that so important and significant? What does that represent for all of you specifically? Well, I think, you know, we all know that it's going to be very, very difficult to get there. And I think it's going to be one of the greatest accomplishments that humans have ever done. And to do that as an international endeavor is just going to be the icing on the cake where it wasn't something that one country could do. We had to all pull together, and I can't think of a bigger milestone. And I think the entire world will be watching the first time a human walks on Mars. That's for sure. Uh, you know, let's shift in gears just a little bit. You know, most people, as you well know, will never ever set foot in space. They'll also never really meet an astronaut. And so I wonder, what do you think regular people can take away from your experience, from the lessons that you're talking about, about working together and implement that in their everyday lives here back on Earth? Uh, in my opinion, uh, friendship makes everything uh, possible. So working together as an international crew, we are always helping each other and doing great things every day. So to me, the friendship makes everything uh, possible. Fantastic. Now, now I want to get to a fan favorite. Uh, a lot of our audience is asking if you guys can show us an example of microgravity in action. Here we go. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, and before we wrap up, we just have one or two more questions. Uh, I wanted to go down the line and hear from each of you. When you think about the future of humanity and life on Earth, what's the thing that makes each of you most excited? And what's the one thing that makes each of you most nervous or afraid? Well, for me, it's one and the same. Uh, when, when we look out the window in our cupola, you can see the most beautiful sight that you've ever seen in your life, uh, a, a, a nice, blue, healthy Earth. And it's a very small place, as we know. Uh, we get older and we go, we develop greater and greater technology. Uh, the country's borders become more uh, gray. Uh, people start to morph towards each other's cultures and it becomes a very, a very small place. I think that's a really good thing because we work together more and we get more done and, and we're more efficient. Uh, but that also can be very dangerous because there's a lot of things that uh, obviously we'd have to look out for when, when the world becomes a small place and uh, we may uh, need to force ourselves to take care of the uh, earth uh, a little bit better than we have been. And I'd add to that that uh, I'm really excited about the availability of information about each other and how we can learn about other people so readily. That's, some, that's definitely a new thing. So the ability to understand people from other sides of the earth is, is there. The thing that concerns me is how easy it is to have misinformation and to confuse things. So my hope is that somehow we develop a culture where there, there are reputable sources for information that we can trust all the time, and we know that we're getting the, the, the facts. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's information, hope, and fear for me. I think what I find most interesting, what I think is uh, one of the biggest positives, and you see it up here every day, it's all about diversity, and that's what makes a great team, is that we are all different, uh, not only different nationalities, but where we grew up, what we studied, and that's what makes us a great team is our diversity. And kind of adding on to what they said, what scares me is that it's very easy to think that you are always right and not take the time to understand somebody else's point of view. And when that happens, things become dangerous. So I hope that we can all take the time to learn about um, people that are different than ourselves and try to understand where they're coming from. I am thinking about same, exactly the same thing with Joe. 
and uh, different cultures, different languages, different countries, different background, backgrounds. Still, we are working together in harmony, living together in peace. That's a that's great thing for me. And uh, that requires patience. Uh, we have to uh, talk. Uh, maybe uh, requires more explanation each other or uh, more talk between uh, crew members. So that's the difficult part for me. Great. Well, before we wrap up, just one or two more. This question is directed at uh, the veteran of the group, I believe, Joe. I know you're, you're, you've been up there a few times. Uh, can you talk about the most amazing image that you've seen that stands out in your mind of Earth? And, uh, and I know you're also, uh, your family is Puerto Rican, and perhaps on a more somber note, I wanted to ask you, this year was obviously a very trying time. Um, were you able to see the hurricanes from up there? And uh, if so, what was that experience like? And can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so probably my, uh, my best image uh, was on my last uh, mission, and I was up here with just uh, myself and two Russians, and the auroras were just, they were kicking. And so it was just the most incredible thing I've ever seen where it looked like the entire earth was just covered in these beautiful greens and reds. And it was just, you know, more than I ever could have imagined. And that will always uh, stick out in my mind. And we can see uh, hurricanes from up here. Uh, and I know that a lot of pictures were taken uh, before we arrived and it, of course, the devastation that happened in Puerto Rico, but in other places, you know, across the world, it's one of those things when you see a hurricane from here, you can appreciate the structure of the hurricane. It almost looks beautiful, but at the same time, you realize the devastation that it's causing and your heart goes out for those that get affected by that. So it's, it's tough when you're here, when you have family and friends that are affected and there's not a whole lot you can do from here except offer your support take pictures, give people a call, and just let them know you're thinking about them. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you all participants with Mike Internet Media. Station, please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio communications.